Hey everybody, my name is Spamos and welcome back to Titanic VR. In the previous episode, we took a tour of Titanic's exterior decks. But coming up tonight, we begin our interior exploration, starting with the bow, exploring from the top to the very bottom. So, without any more stalling, let's begin! Welcome to the game, everybody. We're currently two and a half miles down at the bottom of the North Atlantic, and emerging from the darkness is the wreck of the Titanic. Now, the game plan for today, we're going to maneuver our submersible into a position above the forward well deck cargo hold. So at which point, we'll point our lights straight down to get as much light as possible inside of the ship because then we're going to jump out of the submersible into an ROV and we're going to explore as deep as we can inside of the wreck of the Titanic. But as we get into position, I've got a little update for you. The developers of the game, Immersive VR Education, they've been reading the comment section. I hope you said something nice about them. Now, they picked up about people asking, when is the stern going to be added to the game? Well, they've told me they're working on it right now, and they're currently hoping to have it implemented by around the middle of the year, so June, July time. That'd be amazing, and you know, as soon as it is out, I'm going to be straight in. It, so look out for that in the future. Anyway, here we are in position, forward well deck cargo holds, got a bit of a crow's nest underneath me. Let's get a bit of a 180 swivel underway because we're not going to go straight down the cargo holds. Oh, that would be way too simple. Ginormous opening like that. No, 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 no. i got a plan. Here we are inside the ROV. Goodbye, mere submersible. That's not quite a mere submersible. Now let's begin our descent onto the decks of the Titanic. Now. I don't want to enter via the cargo holds themselves. It may seem a bit too obvious and too easy. It's a ginormous hole offering easy access to the decks. But hear me out. There's all these doorways and passageways. And I don't know. I think for the, the broader sense of the audience, people don't really know how they interconnect with each other, where they lead to and what's behind them and stuff like that. So I have decided I want to explore this as if I was actually a passenger on board the ship. There we go. So we're not going to be flying through the sky where we can avoid it. We're going to be going through the doorways, up and down stairwells, and we're going to show how everything connects together, okay? So for reference, we're currently on the forward well deck of the Titanic to the left of that forward cargo hold. Look at that. That's amazing. Let's begin our adventure. Now, instead of going straight ahead down that third class stairway, we're going to take a right-hand turn, and we're going to go through this doorway right here. But to help me with our exploration, I've got the deck plans to my side so if we ever get lost or if we're ever not sure what we're looking at I can always refer to that everyone breathe in tight squeeze and here we are long dark spoopy corridor right this doorway on our right hand side coming up now this is an important doorway because people recently in the comments have been asking hey spammers how did the, the lookouts get into the crow's nest easy answer is that doorway there. Slightly longer answer is, if you go through that doorway there, you're going to find yourself at the top of a seaman's stairwell. Immediately on your right-hand side, there's another door. Go through that. A very small corridor takes you in and then to the right. And then, boom, you're at the bottom of the main mast. You can climb up inside the main mast with a little ladder. And then, whammy, you're out on the crow's nest. So that's how they got up there. As easy as that. I want to try and do this with as few cuts as possible because there's quite a lot to get through. And this is the only speed I can see me move at. Coming up on the right hand side, cargo hatch number one. This is the hatchway that got blown off when the ship impacted on the seabed. It tumbled forwards, hitting the crane at the very tip of the bow. That's what we're looking at right now. Now, straight ahead of us, we've got some caged off areas. Now, on the other side of this, you've got lots of machinery for all, the, all of the deck equipment on the, up above, your windlasses and your capstans and all of that jazz. That's all back there. Sadly, we can't go back there. We're not allowed. Boo-hoo. <laughs> and the textures are glitching a little bit. But hey, it's early access, okay? You have to keep that in mind. That's really spoopy. The doorway is kind of silhouetted with the light from the submersible outside. That's cool and scary at the same time. Now, immediately to our left, you've got the fireman's mess. Loads of tables for them to have their yummy, yummy meals, dinners, breakfasts, whatever you want to call it. And to our right coming up, you've got the surgery and you've got the hospital. The hospital's on the other side as well. I just didn't mention it. And oh, wowzers. Oh, wowie, wowie, look at that. That's amazing. I know that's becoming a cliche with me to say that's amazing at everything, but that is amazing. I think it's just like because everything is a hint of blue, you know? There's another view of that. Now, we also have a third class entrance there, but the doors are all closed up. Boohoo. So let's travel back onto the port side and make our way down the third class stairwell. So here we go. As we snuggle between these double doors, we find ourselves at the top of the third class staircase. We're currently on C deck. We're going to be descending down onto D deck. 
And look at this. It's like we're walking in the footsteps of a third class passenger. And with a 180 at the camera, we should find ourselves in the third class open space. Now this is a very large open room spanning the entire width of the ship. Starboard to port. And in the very center of it, illuminated by our submersible, the cargo holds. It's both beautiful and ghostly at the same time. Now this room would have been full of tables, chairs, people having a good time, having a drink, playing cards. And while that may be gone today, replaced by emptiness and darkness, the remains of the tables and the benches are still in place. There's a pot there, nestled in the silt. Portholes still line the side of the hull. Now, sadly, there's not a great deal to see and do in this room. It's a very spartan, to the point kind of room. It's a place to go, to sit, and to be with fellow passengers as you traveled transatlantic. Now, we're going to leave this area, we're going to go down this staircase here, and drop down onto the E-deck level. Now, the third class was split between the bow and the stern. I believe the males, or single males, were birthed here in the bow, while the, uh, the uh, female singles and the families were birthed in the stern. But either way, they have these two sections, and we're here exploring the forward section. Now, on this side, we're on the port side right now. We have the port side third class entrance. There's another entrance on the other side, on the starboard side, mirroring this one. So this is where the third class would have boarded Titanic, if they were boarding by the bow. So look at this. This is what they would be seeing. They're stepping in. To our right, we have a corridor leading to some cabins and accommodation, a stairwell dropping down, and immediately after that, we have Scotland Road. I'm sure that's a name you all know very well. This was the lifeline that connected the bow and the stern third class sections, as well as uh, allowing the crew to get from the stern to the bow. Now, collapsed with debris, we can't go any further. I know James Cameron was able to get his ROV nestled in and get as far down as he could, but eventually the roof has collapsed more and more making it impossible to go any further. Now, if you want to go get yourself a little bit of tucker, fill up your tum-tum with some food, the first class main dining saloon was located down this corridor midships. Both the stern and the bow will be using this corridor coming together to have some dinner. Now, if we spin our camera around a little bit more, there we go, cargo hatch there. Once again, being illuminated from up above. We have a couple of things to see in this area. We're going to travel onto the starboard side. Now, the starboard side, the whole plating is peeling away from the side of the ship, exposing the ribs and giving us greater access to rooms down below. Now, we're going to be checking all that stuff out. I just want to give you a quick taste. Now, this is where the starboard entrance would have been. It's now kind of missing, and the whole plating is definitely very messy. Let's do a 180 and let's back up. Look at this. The ribs of Titanic exposed. Now, we're not going to go too far away, because we've got, we've got a lot to see and do. I need to keep on course here, but we do have a first-class cabin on our side here, where the wall has eroded away. We have a first-class heater there. Now, I believe this was... Well, is this... I'm not 100% sure here. As always, not an expert. I'm just a, a nerd, as someone put in the comment section below. Um, the first class, first class section in this portion of the ship, it could be split between first class and second class, depending on the needs at the time. If they have an abundance of second class passengers, not many first class, they could release some of the first class cabins for second class, and vice versa. If you have loads of first class and not many second class, boom, you can claim those rooms for first class. Anyway, we're going to push further forwards. Now, on this deck, well, there's not a great deal going on. On our right here, we have female lavatories. Uh, beyond that, we have the male lavatories. On the other side of the ship, we have more male lavatories. Lots of toilets going on here. You stay up above for a little bit of hanging out. You come down here to pee and poo. Anyway, cargo hold there. You can see it's blocked up on the other side. Beyond that wall, beyond that bulkhead rather, that's the um, seamen's berthings. I think there's room for 44 people back there. And now we got some more stairwells going back up to the gem, or the, the open space rather, sorry. And, ooh, reflection of a porthole there. And we can also go deeper down. Let's descend onto F deck. So now as we descend into F deck, we find ourselves amongst the third class accommodation. Behind all these doorways would have been a cabin for third class. Now sadly, none of them are open, so we can't explore any of their rooms. I was a little bit disappointed to find this, but I guess this is maybe what it's like on the wreck. I don't know. I have to check some of the footage. <laughs> but here we go. 
lots of narrow corridors. You can see how it's kind of like a rat maze and how you could easily get lost. Backing up on ourselves, we're back by the ever-present cargo hold. Must have been a familiar sight to help people kind of maintain reference point of where they are. Look at that, looking up. Hi, there's my submersible. Don't leave me behind. Oh, my little claws. Whee! I spin him back the way we came. Now, forward of us, that's where the firemen's bunk beds were. That's where all the people down in the boiler rooms, that's where they slept. Like, not this doorway coming into view now, but behind that cabin, there's a bulkhead, and in front of that, that's where all, well, there's a stairwell immediately in front of that, a big circular stairwell, two of them in tandem, going all the way down to the belly of the ship. But anyway, forward of that, that's where the firemen's birth, birth beds, bunk beds, birth places was. Now let's continue our adventures even deeper into the wreck of the Titanic as we descend down onto G-Deck. Now once again, G-Deck is also full of third class accommodation. Lots of berths, lots of bunk beds, lots of rooms that we can't enter, very sadly. You can really see the hull tethering in, bringing it to a point. Now once again, forward of this section would have been your leading firemen and your greasers, their bunk beds, and more of the stairwells going straight down to the bottom of the ship. Not a lot to see and do here, I'm sad to say. I was kind of hoping that there'd be more kind of Easter eggs hidden down these dark corridors and stuff like that. And maybe when the game's fully released, maybe that's something they're going to do at a later point. Because as we said earlier, this is early access. So what we are seeing is not the final finished product. But I really hope, I'm really praying that they add some uh, Easter eggs. Okay, so we're briefly going to leave G-Deck behind us. We're going to come back, but I need to break one of my rules, so we're going to ascend up the cargo hold, because as we're now back on F-Deck, we're kind of being separated from the rest of the ship, because there's a watertight door that is in the closed position just here. A boo-hoo! So, we kind of have to fly around this one, bad boy. But... There's something I want to show you, so I need to get back to where that third class entrance is. Then we're going to drop back down again so I can show you what's on the other side of those walls. It's good. It's still amazing. It's still amazing. I don't care what you say. It's amazing. Anyway, we're back here on E-Deck. Directly ahead of us now is Scotland Road. Ahead and to the right is the third class entrance. And above us is the third class open space. All places I've taken you to before. I just want to make sure you know in your head where we are. So now we're going to double back on ourselves. This stairwell here. We're going to descend once again to F deck because there's something I want to show you that is immediately at the bottom of this stairwell. And once again, it's like we are a third class passenger walking around, walking the decks. I love it. It's freaking amazing. And inside virtual reality, it's even more amazing. Right. To our left, see that wall there? On the other side of that wall is the first class squash court. It's amazing. I wonder if we could hear the sound of the ball bouncing off the wall of the squeaking of the shoes. Who knows? I suspect you probably could, but maybe you can't. I don't know. Anyway, continuing further forwards, we once again have that ever-present cargo hold. Now, I'm losing my voice a little bit here. I do apologize. <clears throat> now, we've got more accommodation all around us. This is where I'm going to cheat a little bit because I said I wasn't going to fly. I was going to follow the footsteps of the passenger. But I want to get us down into the cargo hold. So what we're going to do is, see, look, accommodation all over this side. We're going to do a 180. Cargo hold. Ooh. I'm going to pretend like there's a crane and it's lowering some cargo. So we're hanging onto the cargo as we drop down the cargo hold. So here we are. We're back on G deck and we've got these open doorways because this is the cargo hold. I need to get a drink. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I can speak again. Right. Here we are. The first class luggage hold. As always, as everywhere in the ship, full of silt and sand, but also lots of cargo boxes, some big, some small. Portholes still line the walls. Now, much like the other places, there's nothing I, of interest that stands out amongst all of this. It is just generic cargo trunks, all in different states of decay. But hey, so the level ones, they're good. If the level ones haven't been opened, the lever, because of how it's treated, prevents the bacteria from destroying what's inside of it. That's how they've been able to recover some of the more delicate items that otherwise would have perished long ago with everything else on board this ship. So we're now transversing onto the starboard side. Again, more cargo absolutely strewn about the place. It's like something really bad happened in here. It's like, it's almost like the ship sunk or something. Who would have thought? 
and there we can see the whole plating peeling away, exposing the ribs. We briefly saw that a little bit earlier. Isn't that amazing? Oh, Spoopy. Oh, Spoopy! Spoopy! Ah! Once again, back into the cargo holes. Well, the cargo hatch, rather. Look at that. It's so spoopy, but it's awesome. Now, if we descend one more level, we bring ourselves down to the first and second class luggage hold, but also through this doorway here. It's closed. Sadly, we can't see inside of it, but that is the specky room or the specie room. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but that's basically a heavily fortified room where the, of the, uh, of the White Star, with Titanic rather for that matter, if she was transporting gold, bullion, currency, or like really high precious cargoes from America to New York or vice versa, that's the room that that would have gone in. So if there is gold on board Titanic, it's in that room. Because the idea being is you load that stuff in first and then you make it inaccessible by actually patching, packing loads of cargo all around it so you can't even physically get to the room. So that's that room there. Now look at this. First and second class baggage holds. More luggage strewn across the place. The stairwell to our side there just takes us back up to the first class luggage hold that we were previously just in. More light bulbs on the ceiling. Once again, it's, it's to the point in utilitarian. There's nothing of elegance or anything that stands out here. It's just the room was an empty room that you put luggage into. And that's the sad reality about a lot of the ship. And this is kind of why people, I say people, why expeditions don't take the risk to go into the stern section of the ship. Because one, it's machinery or it's third class. The rooms are very copy paste utilitarian and bland and empty so for the high risk there's not much payoff so that's why so many of the expeditions focus intently on the bow section now here we are we're in the post office just now amazing now there's a bit of a cheat on the game here there's not a doorway here but they've kind of done some artistic license and they've had a part of the wall panel collapse down. <laughs> a, a partial collapse of the bulkhead granting access to this forward cargo holdy bit. But anyway, the post office. After the collision took place and the water started to fill the lower decks, the post masters, they, they didn't think they were going to sink. So they're running down to the post office, bringing up as many bags as they could to higher ground to stop them getting wet. And little did they know how futile their efforts were just there. Got a parcel room here. More lo more bags. More light bulbs. And this back corner here. I think this is supposed to be a newspaper stand and stuff like that. And then we have a little hoist generator because there should be an opening. There it is. There's the opening. There's an opening right above us. So they could hoist things up and down. Isn't that amazing? The future today. <laughs> oh, I'm banging into stuff. Again, more shelving, more sorting for more of the post officing. It's nice to see like something that resembles a room, resembles a place people would have worked, would have been. You can imagine them just stuffed full of letters. Like even though the one board the ship, you know, the workers, they've still got a lot of work to do. Like, they're not just going to sit on their hands until they get to New York. And again, the whole plating there peeling away given increased access and visibility. But I could probably bring my sub into position and beam some light down. But there's no need. I'm here now. Oh, we've got a desk. Again, it would be so cool. Like, you can see inside the drawer there. It would be super cool if there were some Easter eggs in there. Like, I really hope they do a pass to give Easter eggs all over the game. I know there's a couple inside like, the lab section. There's some nods and references to honor and glory. I wonder if there's a spammer reference in there anywhere, like a YouTube web browser open or something. Wink, wink. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're now ascended back up to the deck above, and we are still in the post office. Sadly, this kind of brings us towards the end of our journey. Now, I'll show you. If we go around this corner here, there's a stairwell going back up. I can't remember how much further we can go up there, but it basically takes you up there. It's where you got the accommodation for the postmaster. Yeah, there's a, a watertight door closing this one. But here, it would lead to accommodation for your postmasters and all of that jazz. And then back, heading forwards, because it's important to remember where your forwards and where your afts are. We're now heading towards the pointy bit of the ship, forwards. 
this otherwise brings you right back out into the cargo hold. So we're going to end this by ascending up the cargo hold. And I hope this has been a fun and albeit educational experience for you. We started off on C-Deck, we descended into the D-Deck open space, a third class open area. We went further into the ship looking at where the third class accommodation would have been, where the lavatories would have been, where the entrance was to board the ship. We then saw the cargo holds, the, the specky room, special room, whatever you want to call it. We then we also referenced where the, uh, the stokers and the firemen, where their accommodation was. I truly hope that our little tour here has really made sense of what is actually contained within the bow of the Titanic. And here we are, we're back at our submersible. Hello, Sadna, you lovely minx. Right, let's get back inside you and let's say our goodbyes. And here we are, back inside the submersible where the whole story began. Let's go to the exterior camera because it's always way more interesting to see what's all around us. Now, as we say our goodbyes, we're going to start our ascent to return back to the surface. Now, on that bombshell, this does bring us to the end of the episode. As I said, I really hope you've had a good time. I hope this has meant something to you. If it has, please leave me a comment down below with your thoughts and opinions. And on that bombshell, thank you for watching. A rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody.